Hi everyone, uh, for this video we are going to do something a little different. We are going to make a rocket ship blasting off into outer space. But before we get too far into that, I just wanted to talk to you for a second. We had a little bit of confusion on what you have to do in enrichment, what's required, what's just for fun. Um, first of all, for all of your enrichment classes, art, music, PE, technology, character, it's all just for fun. Nothing is required right now. Uh, we love hearing from you. We love seeing you do your enrichment stuff. And so we will continue to make things and post them for those of you that want to do it and enjoy it because we always want you guys to have that enrichment in your lives. Um, but it's not required. So if it's a beautiful day and you're wanting to go swimming, um, you don't have to stop what you're doing. You don't have to get out of the pool and go leave Coach Kane a flip grid or go draw a panda bear for me. Um, it's when you want to. It's, and again, it's not required. This is such an unusual time we're all in right now. So we're just trying to figure it out. And we, we leave stuff on our websites because we want it to be there for you for when you want it. Um, but it, again, it's not required. So don't stop if you're enjoying it and you like doing it. But if you'd rather be outside or something, that's fine too. Just be sure you're social distancing. You know, you shouldn't be playing with your next door neighbor because it kind of defeats the purpose of us not being in school. Okay? So if you have any more questions about that, um, you can ask me a question on Flipgrid or you can email any one of us. But back to our video for this week, we are making a rocket ship. And we're going to make it like it's blasting off into space. You'll see the Earth in the distance and some planets. Obviously, we're not going for super realism here. It's just for fun. And what I used on mine, I used some Crayola markers. Okay. I used a pencil and a Sharpie. I used a few crayons, just a black, the beautiful, and purple. And I also used some water and some paint brushes. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Now don't panic if you don't have paint brushes or anything like that because it's you don't have to have it. I'm just going to show you a little trick with them for those of you that do. So um, basically that and of course you'll need paper. So I'm going to change the camera view and we're going to get started. Okay so First, we are going to take our paper. Your paper is going to be going up and down where it's tall and it's skinny. And then what we're going to do, now again, I always put paper underneath it to help protect the table and the surface. I recommend you do the same. And we're going to fold it in half. So we're folding it in half like this. When we're at school, I'll always tell you that you're folding it to make it look like a book. Okay, um, that's also called a hamburger fold. All right, and then I'm going to fold it in half one more time the other direction, like this. And again, it looks kind of like a little book. And then when I open it up, it's divided in half each way. It's divided in half from top to bottom, and it's divided in half from side to side. And that will help us draw our rocket ship and make sure it's in the right place on the paper and hopefully not drawing it too big or too small. Okay, so now to draw our rocket ship, we're just gonna need a pencil. And I'm gonna start off on this top right corner square that we have here. And the rocket's gonna come in at an angle. So if I go from this corner and kind of go up at an angle, right about here, and you may or may not be able to see, I made a teeny tiny little mark there. But that way I know where exactly I'm wanting to draw. And I'm gonna make a little kind of curved line here. And notice that I'm drawing kind of sketchy. Because, you know, you're not, you don't always necessarily get a perfect the first time. But this is gonna be kind of the nose of the rocket here. 
And then I'm going to bring the sides of the rocket kind of down. And again, notice how I am drawing sketchy. And again, I think I talked about this last week, but being left-handed makes it a little challenging to record it because my hand's in the way when I'm drawing. Um, but I'll try to do the best I can here. All right, now on this little section of paper here, you're just going to see a little bit of the rocket coming in there. All right, and then same thing over here, just a little bit of the rocket. And then it comes down into this part of the paper, just a little bit. And then I can make a curved line for the bottom. Now this isn't a complete rocket yet, obviously. Um, now I feel like it's a little too skinny over here, so I'm kind of going to make it a little wider here. And this is why you draw sketchy. Because it's kind of like if you picture it almost like clay that you're building on, like you can add more and more. It's the same thing when you're drawing. So that way I can keep going until I'm happy with the shape and I'm happy with the size. And that is why people draw sketchy. Okay, so there's the bottom of my rocket. Then, oh, and I just realized I did this curve going the wrong direction. Another good reason to draw a pencil. I did it like up and down like a rainbow actually needs to be going this direction, okay? And then I'm gonna have just another, what I call copycat line, right underneath it, because it's copying it. It's a little copycat, like a little brother or sister. And then I'm gonna make a little line there. And then I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit more. Try to make it even on each side. And another kind of copycat line. And then just a wee bit more. Right now it looks like a Christmas light. <laughs> you can use your imagination. It looks a little bit like a Christmas light. All right, and then you have the little kind of fins on the rocket. Fins are probably not the right word to use, but we're not going to worry about that right now because we are not in science or engineering class. We are in art <laughs> and home art that. Now notice how I'm drawing it on both sides pretty much at the same time. One thing I see a lot of kids do when we're at school is they'll draw one side. They start up here and they go and they draw everything on this side and then they come over and try to do this one. And so then they're doing it several minutes apart. And when you do that, it doesn't always look quite right because you've done them at two different times. So if you can try to draw them at the same time, it does help you get it a little more even. All right, so now I have my rocket. I need to add a line up here. And now notice this one is like the rainbow right direction. This one is like an upside down rainbow. Now right here, I'm gonna sketch in a circle. And again, I make it sketchy because I can add or I can take it away. Again, think of it as like building up with clay until I'm happy with the size. And that's actually how you learn to draw even when you're in college. When I was an art major in college and I was taking my art classes, this was how they taught us to draw. Now, I'm gonna clean that up a little later. I'll show you how that works. Now, I am gonna turn this a little bit because I like putting USA, anytime I do a rocket or spaceship, I guess I could put NASA technically. Now, you don't have to do this. You could put your name on it, you could put Russia on it, China, Vietnam, pretty much any country you want. All right, so now I have my rocket. Next, I need the fire. And this is one of my favorite things about drawing the rocket. It's the fire. All right, so I have that kind of fire shape. And then I'm gonna do kind of a copycat shape 
inside it. So this, when I draw, or color it, sorry, this will be yellow, this will be orange. But that way we have our fire. And we have some movement lines there. So now I have my rocket ship. Okay, so now I'm gonna draw the planet that you see off in the distance, which obviously is Earth. Now, it wouldn't have to be Earth if you didn't want it to be Earth. You could pretend like you're on Jupiter and you just took off. You can make up a planet, do anything you want. But regardless of what planet or moon or wherever it is, you're gonna have that curved line there. And you won't see the whole planet because you're close to it. And then for Earth, I just kind of do a little wiggly line to just kind of imply where the ground would be. So this will all be water. This will all be land. I'm gonna make it kind of end over here a little bit. And you'll see that'll make a little more sense once we start adding color. Now I am going to add a little planet up here, like it's further away. And again, notice I'm just doing the circle kind of sketchy. And then I'm going to add a little ring, kind of like Saturn. All right. And then I'm going to do another one over here, like it's just kind of going off the edge of the page. Maybe that's Neptune way off in the distance or something. And then I'm gonna make stars. Now, when I make my stars, notice I am not trying to make them perfect and even or even accurate. I'm making them really loose and sketchy because this is supposed to be just kind of a fun, whimsical picture, which means we're not trying to make it perfect or realistic. And if you start trying to make things perfect like stars, you're gonna stress yourself out, and then it's not fun or whimsical anymore. So I just kind of did some loose, really sketchy stars, and that's pretty much it for drawing out the picture. Now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna move on to the Sharpie, and you're gonna see how I'm gonna take these sketchy areas and clean them up quite a bit. Okay, so I have my beloved black Sharpie. <laughs> And I'm going to start off with the shape of my rocket. And again, I'm never trying to be perfect. You will drive yourself crazy if you do that. If you've watched all my videos, you've already heard my fourth grade story. But I was so hard on myself in fourth grade and fifth grade trying to be perfect. And if I saw even one flaw in my picture, I threw it away. And um, there's no point in doing that to yourself because nobody's perfect. We're not little art robots cranking out art. Um, and we never will be because we're people. We're human beings. We don't want to be little art robots. The earth would not be fun without people. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna trace over the parts that I like and leave the little sketchy parts that we don't need. And then I'll erase that later. Same thing here with my earth off in the distance. And like I said, I'll erase that and I'll clean it up later. And sometimes you even notice things as you're just tracing over it with the Sharpie. You realize something you need to take away or add. And I'm tracing it now on this one we're, for this week or this video, depending on your timeline of doing these. Um, we're tracing over everything. We're not leaving the pencil showing anywhere. In a minute when I'm done tracing and erasing, you shouldn't be able to see any pencil on my paper anymore after that point. And again, I'm still keeping my stars fun and whimsical and loose and very much not perfect. Alright, 
So now I have traced all of it and I'm gonna move on to racing. Okay, so as you guys know, I don't have any of my good racers here at home, so I'm just using the ones on the end of my pencil. But I'm gonna start off right here and see now I can clean that up where I had all the sketchy circles and also cleaning up where I sketched out the shape of my rocket ship. So a lot of times when you see um, paintings and drawings from professional artists or famous artists, it looks, a lot of times to us, to regular people like us, it looks like it's perfect. Of course, if you ask that artist, they would probably laugh at you thinking that it's perfect because they're seeing everything that they thought was wrong. You know, and the artist's toughest critic is themselves. But in reality, they didn't just pick up a pen or a pencil and draw that whatever that is perfect the first time. They sketched it and they erased and they had to adjust it. Because they're people too. They may have a lot of talent. They may be successful and professional or famous artist, but they're still not perfect. Just like if you take musical artists, like, I, I don't, you guys are probably too young for Beyonce, but like if you say Beyonce, a lot of people think of her as like the ultimate singer. They think, you know, her talent is amazing and perfect and her voice is amazing and perfect. But chances are, if you went and talked to her, like just friend to friend, she probably would tell you otherwise. She probably hears every little part of her voice that's, you know, not what she intended or not what she wishes it was. Or to the rest of us, it sounds great. So the whole point I'm trying to make here is don't be so hard on yourself. Don't try to be perfect. So I've erased pretty much all of the pencil and you pretty much just see the Sharpie. And now we're ready to move on to the marker. Okay, so I'm starting out with just my rocket ship. And I'm going from the example that I made earlier because it'll make it a little easier for myself. But on my rocket ship, I used red, blue, yellow, and orange and counting the fires part of the rocket ship. Now you're probably looking at this and thinking, that's paint, but it was actually marker. And I'm gonna show you what I mean in a few minutes. Those of you that are older, like in third or fourth grade, you probably already know this because I did this when you guys were younger. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, starting my red marker, both of these stripes are gonna be red and the top of the rocket's gonna be red. So I am going to outline that. Now this one, because it's kind of narrow, I'm just doing that. And then I'm going to outline this part. Now because my marker is really wide, it's not going to leave a lot left, and that's okay. And then I'm going to outline just one side of the circle. Okay, and this is going to eventually be what I call the halo method. And again, our older friends if you have a good memory or you're not new to Smith, you probably already are like, oh, I know what she's talking about. All right, so notice I outlined the fire, the orange part. I'm gonna outline the yellow part of the fire. Okay. And I'm gonna outline the blue parts. So I'm just outlining it. Now, if you could use skinny markers or fat markers. Fat markers actually will work a little better for this because they put more ink on your paper, but either one is fine. Now for my planets. For my planets, I use the bright pink, the regular pink, and I used some purple, okay? So for this one, because you don't see a whole lot of this one, I'm just gonna outline it with the pink. And same thing with this one. And this pink, I'm sure you're seeing, it's a really soft, light pink. So I'm also gonna come with this darker pink and add it 
kind of on top. And I tried to make it a little skinnier. And then for the ring on this planet, I am going to trace over it with purple. Now again, because it's skinny, the purple's kind of taken over it, but that's okay. It's no biggie at all. Then for my stars, I got my yellow, and I'm outlining my stars. Now again, because they're little, it looks like, because it pretty much is, like I'm coloring the whole thing in yellow. But you'll get to see later, it does make a little bit of a change with what we're going to do. And again, this is called the halo method. Now, this is something that just Miss Thompson came up with in my own little warped head. <laughs> um, what we're going to end up doing is basically painting with markers, and you'll see more in a minute. But the name Halo Method is one that I came up with on my own. And I got my blue. I'm going to outline the earth with my blue. Alright. And then I'm going to add this medium blue right next to it. And I'm trying to be neat with it because you will later be able to see some of it where you outlined it. Like especially on the planet there, you can see that. So you don't want it to end up being like too messy and crazy. And you can always go back and add more if you need to. Like if you feel like it's not enough blue. Um, for example, down here I am going to need some more blue. I know that just from experience. I'm going to add a little black line here for that land. I'm going to add the medium blue. I'm kind of doing the opposite here of what I did up here. And that's no biggie because it mixes them together anyway. But that gives me some blue down there. Now for my land, I'm going to take the traditional green and I'm outlining that little continent or whatever it is. And again, obviously I'm not trying to be realistic. No one's gonna look at this and go, oh, that's Russia. Because <laughs> you can't really tell what it is. And then I have a darker green, it's just a little darker. I'm outlining that. Again, remember, you can always go back and add more. If you start painting and you're like, oh, this isn't even close to being enough green. You can always go back and add more. But before you do, you always want to let it dry. You're going to see what I'm talking about in just a minute. Now, for those of you that don't have a paintbrush, okay, for example, I didn't even have a paintbrush here. I, when I was in Tom Thumb getting my groceries, I bought this little watercolor set and these brushes, they have them in the school supply aisle. Um, I mentioned in one of my other videos, um, Michael's curbside pickup. I do not recommend that, it is two thumbs down. I ordered some brushes last week, paid for them, they took my money, no brushes. So later this week I'm gonna have to call them and try to deal with that. So I do not recommend curbside pickup for Michaels. Um, but, um, you know, if your mom's getting groceries anyway, maybe she's willing to pick something up for you. And again, just like always, if she doesn't want to, take no for an answer. All right, now we're gonna move on to, we're gonna skip the painting part and we're gonna do the sky and then we're gonna come back to the painting. So I know you're probably anxious to get to that, but we're saving the best for last. Okay, so to color the outer space part, we are going to use a blue. I used beautiful, but you can use any blue. We're going to use black, and we're going to use a purple. Now, again, if you don't have these, you know, you can, you can just get creative with it. Choose any color you want for your space, because again, the best part about art is there's no wrong answers. But I'm taking this one. This is that new beautiful that they came out with. And I chose this because it's a little darker than a traditional blue. And notice I'm coloring with the side again because it makes it softer. 
you don't have those harsh crayon marks like that. Instead, you're coloring soft. Hopefully you can see the difference. And that really helps you not have so much of that, you know, brush stroke effect going in a million different directions. It also helps you color a larger amount of space quicker. So if you're like me and you have trouble sitting still and doing one thing for a really long time, this is definitely the way to go. Now when I first started coloring with the side of my crayon, I wasn't able to do it with the paper on. Um, when I was your age, I always had to peel the paper off of my crayons to be able to do that. Um, it's just now that with lots of experience, I'm able to do it with the paper on. So if you're struggling, peeling the paper off of your crayon might help. All right, now I'm gonna color all of this with my beautiful, but I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me color. So I'm gonna fast forward to finish coloring the blue layer. Okay, so ta-da, the blue is done. But as you know, outer space does not look just plain blue. So I am gonna take a black and go right on top of it with my black. I'm coloring the same way. I'm coloring soft, coloring with the side. And I'm doing, um, I'm pressing down about the same amount, like meaning whether you're pressing down hard or soft. Um, I'm more of a believer in pressing down softly. And I'm trying to cover the blue with the black, not completely. I want to be able to see the blue kind of coming through the black. And I'm going to try to make it somewhat even. Now, just like when I did the blue, I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me color for 20 minutes. So I'm going to fast forward. Okay, ta-da! Now you can see I am finished with the black part of it. Now I'm going to take the purple, and I'm not going to do a whole lot with the purple. I'm just going to add a hint of it here and there, especially in the places where it looks a little lighter and you see more of the white kind of trying to peek through. And this is basically just to kind of give it a little more interest. I don't, I don't want it to be like blaringly obvious that there's purple here and there. It's just almost like, like a little hint or suggestion of it. So it's not much at all, as you can see. Okay, so there I am finished with the background and therefore the crayons. All right, and now is the fun part where we're going to paint. And I'm using that, that means air quotes. It means you're, it's kind of like you're painting, but not completely. Okay, so for this step, you only need paint brushes and water. You don't need any actual paint. Now, obviously, if you don't have any paint brushes, you're not gonna be able to do this. If you don't have paint brushes, what I would do at this point is I would take my markers and just finish coloring, okay? Um, or whatever it is that you do have, even if the whole thing's crayon. I just wanted to show you this in case you have markers, maybe you have some brushes left over from another project, and you miss painting, but you don't have any paint. So what you do is if you're using your typical Crayola washable crayons, or not crayons, <laughs> markers, um, because they are water soluble, you can paint with them. When you paint with water right on top of it, it turns it into paint. Now it's not as perfect as painting, you know, with an actual set of paint, but as you can see, it still gives you that kind of effect. Now, even here where it filled in the whole spot, I'm still gonna do that because it kind of evens it out. And here you'll see it kind of fill in that little hole there. Now notice I'm not painting my blue right now. 
And the reason for that is if I have, and you kind of see the blue coming in right there, if I have two wet spaces right next door to each other, they're gonna mix together. So like if I painted that blue circle right now, that blue and that red would mix together. And it would look like a big mess. And that's the biggest mistake I see people making when they paint is painting things right next door to each other. Same thing here. If I went ahead and painted this blue stripe, these two red stripes and this blue stripe would mix together. And it would just look like a big mess. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let these red parts dry. And then when they're completely dry, I'm gonna come back and paint the blue. And then they won't mix together. If you look at my example I made ahead of time, you can see that there was a little bit of mixing right there, but for the most part, they stayed in their own lane, so to speak. <laughs> and so that's the key, is waiting for it to dry. So now, since I'm waiting for that red to dry, I can come up to this planet and work on that. Now, you may not be able to see it other than my arm, but I did clean my brush off. And now I'm painting the pink. And the lighter colors are more subtle, meaning you won't see them mixed together quite as much. And also, sometimes when you come back, you'll be able to see where it mixed up a little bit more than you will right when you did it. And then over here, I have this little one. So, and there's not much to that one, so I'm just gonna get it wet and let it do its thing. All right, now I'm gonna do the stars, because I don't have to worry about them, because they're just kind of out here, literally in space, doing their own thing. And even though it almost filled up the whole star, and you won't see a whole lot of difference, once it dries, it just has that more painted look than just a marker look, which makes it a little more special. So I'm just kind of going over those, and then I'm going to leave them alone and let them dry. Alright, now I'm going to come and I'm going to paint my ground, because it's not touching anything that's wet, and I can safely go ahead and paint it. So I am painting the green, and you're going to see those three greens kind of mix and run together. And I kind of just go back and forth. And that's why earlier I mentioned that the fat markers work better because they put more ink on your paper. The more ink you put on your paper, the more paint, so to speak, you end up having. Okay, and, then, and if you look at this one compared to this one, you can kind of see the difference. And again, I'm trying to stay off of the blue areas. I'm trying to stay off of my rocket, of course, and I'm mixing these together. And as they dry, they will mix together a little bit more, because I've had some where I've painted it this way, and again, this is called the halo method, because it's kind of like you're making a halo around the space, and then you go and you paint in it. But sometimes I'll have where I think, oh, that really didn't mix together very well. And then you come back, like if you look up here, and you'll see where it mixed a little more as it started drying. Now, I have to wait for my red to dry before I can do my blue. I have to wait for the ground and the red to dry before I can do the fire. And I have to wait for all those to dry before I can do the water. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a break I'm gonna go do something else, and I'm gonna come back once it's dry. Okay, so <clears throat> it is pretty much dry now. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. So I'm going to paint the blue parts first because the red parts I painted first, and they are the most dry. So I'm painting on top of that blue there kind of go in circles a little bit and try to let it blend and you can see how much the red blended in it blended in quite a bit 
Like I said, it does quite a bit more after you leave it and just let it dry. It's, and sometimes, it's kind of fun to see, because you don't really know what's gonna happen exactly. And it's kind of fun to leave some of that up to chance to some extent. All right, now I'm gonna move on to the fire. Now, I can paint the yellow and the orange at the same time because we actually want those to mix together a little bit. When you're doing anything like a sunset or fire or anything like that, you want a certain amount of the colors blending together because that's how it is in real life. So I'm just, oops, I got some blue in there by accident. I didn't mean for that to happen, but I'm not gonna freak out either. It's not the end of the world. It's not ideal, but it's not the end of the world. All right, now the only thing left is the water. Now, originally when I made the part of the video where we outlined, I just had it outlined here and here. And as you can see, I went ahead and I outlined the rest of the parts of the water so it goes all the way around for each of those shapes. And then I'm gonna take a paintbrush. I'm trying to, I think I'm gonna use this one. And I'm gonna get right on top of the blue and I'm gonna paint. And I'm just gonna kinda let it mix and see what happens. You wanna be sure you get on top of all of that blue marker with your water because otherwise it can't mix together and do whatever it is it's gonna do. And again, at first it looks like it's not doing much and you're kind of feel almost disappointed or even worried, but let it dry. You can see my green did quite a bit and it's kind of cool how it kind of mixed together and had that kind of, I don't know what I'm, the word I'm looking for, but where it just kind of mixed together and it doesn't look perfect like I colored it with a marker and that's a good thing. There's quite a bit of blue, so it should blend together. I'm just kind of making sure I didn't miss any. So you can see here, you can see where it's starting. So I can see that it's definitely wet and it's doing its little thing here. Places where it doesn't stay in the line, try to not worry about that. Just like I'm trying to not worry about that little spot of blue there. All right, and then I'm gonna let it dry and see what happens. Okay, so my picture is pretty much completely dry now. You can see how the blues mixed together and the greens. <clears throat> you can see where I had a little bit of the blue running into the red, and that's probably because since I was filming it, I kind of rushed it a little bit. If I would have waited even five or 10 minutes more, I probably could have prevented that. And you can see them both side by side. This is the one I made ahead of time. Um, and this is the one I made while I was filming. And you can see definitely a lot of similarities, couple of little differences, but for the most part you see. But I mainly wanted you to see that halo method. So if you're missing painting and you don't have paint, but you have a paintbrush, maybe you have a leftover from science fair or something you did, um, then you can paint if you have washable markers. It doesn't have to be the Crayola brand, but as long as it is a washable, water-soluble marker, it will not work with Sharpies, because Sharpies are waterproof. And that's why when I outlined it, I outlined it with a Sharpie, because I did otherwise that black run really fast. So that's why another reason we use Sharpies so much. But that is basically it, and I'm really excited about them. I can't wait to see yours. Now, just like I said at the beginning of the video, you don't have to go to Flipgrid. So if it's stressing you and your parents out, you don't have to. I love getting to see your art, and I will leave you a comment if you go on there, because I know I think some of you enjoy it because you go there quite a bit. But if you just want to do your art and be done with it, that is totally fine too. Again, um, right now we're all just kind of figuring out the strange, unique time that we're all going through. 
And for me, the most important part is that you do the art and that you're enjoying it and you're having fun. But if it's stressing you and your parents out, nothing is required except for your regular classroom stuff. <laughs> so, and you can tell how glad I'm not a classroom teacher. Um, so, um, thank you very much. I hope you have a good week. And just to give you a little sneak peek of the next project, we're going to paint a lighthouse. I did that while I was waiting for the parts to dry, and I'm really excited about that. So, the next video I'll be making for the next week, um, we'll be making the lighthouse. So, take care of yourselves. Be good to your parents. Listen. Follow directions. Um, and be nice to your brothers and sisters.